Hello friends, today on Gardening with Creekside, we are going to plant a privacy screen on the back edge of our property with some gorgeous Thuja Green Giants and some Berkey Eastern Red Cedars. Stay tuned. friends welcome to gardening with creekside i am jenny and today we're in a different spot of our property that you have not formally been introduced to so this is the very back edge of our property and behind me is really our property line we are going to plant a privacy screen hedge today not that we have an immediate need for some privacy but this is more of a preventative measure in case 10, 20 years from now, the property behind us gets sold and we don't want everybody looking into our backyard. So we decided to be proactive instead of reactive and go ahead and plant this screen. What I am surrounded by are some gorgeous trees that we got um, earlier this week from a fantastic wholesale nursery in Cameron, South Carolina, Dothan Trees. And they do a magnificent job of growing just this wide variety of trees that they service really kind of the whole eastern part of the United States. Beside me, I have six massive, gorgeous, Berkey Eastern Red Cedars. They are a fantastic evergreen tree that are hardy for just really just about the entire country. I think it's like zones three to nine. Love these because in the summertime, their foliage will be this gorgeous blue, green, silver color. And then in the winter, they'll take on kind of a red copper tone. They can get pretty big. This is why we're using them for a, a privacy screen. They will get a base of 20 feet and I believe 20 to 30 feet. We'll make sure we put up all the correct dimensions on the screen for you in case I've got something wrong. So we're gonna do a double screen, a double planting. The Berkeys will be in front and then we are going to window pane um, behind them with some Thuja Green Giants. So window pane simply means that there will be two Berkeys and then there will be a Thuja Green Giant in the center of them, but behind it. So there's not gonna be a straight line, it'll be a double line. So we will get a great different color variation. We have talked about Thuja Green Giants before. We love them, again, a gorgeous evergreen tree that are in just this natural pyramidal shape, like that classic Christmas tree, but just on a much grander scale. They will get to be at the base in that 15 to 20 foot range also, and then they can get, you know, 30, 40 feet tall. So between them, this will give us a gorgeous privacy screen because this area, you know, we've talked about the patio before, this area is behind the patio. So again, we're just trying to um, kind of cozy in, nook in our property because we do sit on eight and a half acres. So we have a lot of space and we wanna make it cozy and private. So that is what we're gonna do today. You'll notice that these are not in containers. They are what you call a B&B, &B, so ball and burlap. They, what the the advantage of doing this is is that these were these trees were growing in the ground a week ago and then over there at Dothan they use the machine to root prune and cut them out of the ground and then they're wrapped up in this burlap with this wire cage around that that means that they are not root bound they are healthy and happy gorgeous massive trees to try to get a tree of this size especially this Berkey in a container would be a huge huge container so when you do the B&B &B, you can typically get a much larger tree um, you have a healthier root system because it's not does not have the the um, the risk does not run the risk of being root bound they're very happy it has great soil in there so you don't have to water as much of course they're going into our clay soil here in the middle of november so they will be nice and happy but we're just going to get these things moved out um, kind of placed and get the holes dug and get them going and as we go along i will explain what we're doing so let's get started
Jerry behind me is on the Bobcat and he has the auger. We have already gone ahead and marked where both the Berkeys and the Green Giants are going to go, but the Berkeys are going to obviously be in front and they're the bigger ones. And so we don't want to lose our mark of where we're going to plant them. He's going to go ahead and dig some pilot holes for the Berkeys. Now, obviously the Berkey root ball is a lot bigger than the auger. So we have a separate auger that we can use for them, but by drilling a smaller hole, it will help that bigger auger fit in there and get the hole nice and big. And again, when we go plant the green giants first, we won't lose where the Berkeys are gonna go because we have everybody spaced out exactly correct. The Berkeys are gonna be 20 feet apart from each other because they do grow, their base is 20 feet wide. And so you kind of cut that in half. And so you plant, you have 10 feet for each of the trees to grow. And so they'll just be kissing each other once they are at mature height So and size. So the Berkeys are gonna be every 20 feet apart in a row, kind of straight behind me. And then we will move on and do the green giant holes and actually get them in the ground. All the holes are dug and we are ready to start planting. We've had one of you sweet viewers ask us before if our soil was really um, as red as it appears on the video or is that just a lighting trick? No, it's really that red. I mean, we are blessed here in North Carolina. We are in the Piedmont, North Carolina and we have red clay soil. It can be challenging at times because it can get really compacted and um, clunky but the good thing is too it really holds the water and the nutrients so when we fertilize and we do get rain it doesn't leach out of our soil really fast it holds on to it because it red clay can get really compacted that's why we love to be able to use these augers because you can just see that the soil is very soft and fluffy so it really aerates the soil before we put it in there when you're planting trees, you always want to remember that your hole needs to be wider than the root ball, not necessarily deeper. Again, because we have the red clay soil, we do not want to plant our trees and shrubs, even with the soil line, the native soil line, and certainly not below the soil line. Why? because we have wet winters. And because of that, and that we have the red clay soil, all that water really gets kind of stuck right there. And a great way to kill your trees and shrubs is for them to be sitting in water. They will rot. So you want your trees, your shrubs, to actually be sitting an inch or two above the soil line when you have this really thick um, water retaining clay soil that we have. So we will plant these a little bit high. The root ball will be showing that way the water sheds away. The water doesn't pile up and sit at the trunk of the tree and rot the tree. Trust me, there are plenty of roots in here. It will send roots down and out to find water. It's okay that you have a little bit of a root ball exposed. This is just one of the tricks of planting in red clay that if you have that, you, if you can learn this trick really soon, then 
it will save you a lot of headache and heartache of losing trees. Now, because this is a B&B, &B, it is not root bound, so we don't have to worry about breaking up the roots. How do you treat a product like this? Well, basically we're gonna lower it in the hole and leave it at that. It does have a metal cage around it to hold it all in with that natural burlap sack around it. All of that goes into the ground. We don't pull any of that away. If we were to pull that away, then all of that soil is gonna fall away and all of the roots are just gonna be exposed and gangly and not happy. We want to keep the integrity of its root ball. So we are going to place it in there with biotone in the bottom of the hole. Remember, biotone is a great fertilizer that is for your roots. It helps your roots grow. It doesn't have to, um, it just opens them up and lets them you know, get the oxygen and the water and the nutrients that they need. So biotone goes in the bottom, then the tree goes in. You will notice though, once we get it in and she's placed and we have her exactly where we want her, before we start pulling the soil back in, the native soil back in, we are going to pull away all of that burlap from the top of the tree trunk. We do not want to leave that on top of the tree and the roots. That will smother those roots. So we want to expose it and bring it open. We'll get her in the ground, pull all that back, and then get that native soil put back in here. Now, you do not want to amend this hole with potting soil, um, compost, none of that. If you're going to amend your soil with compost, you either need to do the entire planting area or what we call just top dress this area. So you can take um, any of a great compost that you can buy, whether it's the land and sea or a great composted like cow manure or chicken manure. There's tons of great products out there on the market. Then you can take that compost just like we did with the persimmon trees and you're going to put it around the edge. You don't want to amend just this hole. If you do that, water will get stuck in there and you can actually kind of drown your tree. So we are going to plop all of these in and then we will get moving on to the Berkeys. Good. She's a little wider. So we found out that when we were planting this tree, that of course it is more of a conical shape, the root ball is, and um, the top is a little wider than what the auger did the hole for. So probably with the rest of them, we will go ahead and use the big auger and put it on there and get it nice and um, wide at the top so they just slide down there really easy. Sweet thing here is um, going ahead and just hand digging the top of the hole to make sure that it's nice and um, <laughs> it's good times, all good times. See, even when you're a professional like we are, you know, you still live and learn and you just go with the flow. Rarely does it ever go perfect. I don't really think there is such a thing as perfect. I think that's a big lie that we're sold. Anyway, just go with the flow and make it happen, folks. Okay. And then don't forget with these B and B trees that you've got to tear away, um, cut away all of the top part of the burlap that's on top of the tree. So Jerry's just cutting away the um, the white string is, was just to hold it all together and so that we could lift it on and off of the trailer. So he's cutting that away with that wire cage. Um, again, it holds the root ball together, but it also makes it easy to transport. So you can take those metal prongs and then just pull them back, leave them in the ground. It's fine. They'll decompose over time. The burlap will do the same thing. It'll decompose. It'll be fine. Um, but you've got to get all of that away from the trunk of the tree and on the top of the roots.
quite sure why I think that a project's not gonna take as long as it really does, but in my head I think, oh, well, we'll just go outside and plant those trees in the ground and it'll be done. Look at these splits. Yeah, no, not so much. Not when you're talking about these gorgeous, massive trees that we had to put in the ground. They are all planted. They are fantastic. Obviously, we're at the next morning and um, we wanted just to come back and recap. We didn't do this last night just because there was a bunch of different things going on at the nursery and we just didn't have time. And with the course of the time change, it gets darker a whole lot earlier. Um, but the project is finished. It is the next morning. All of these gorgeous trees are planted. We've got mulch around them. And just as a recap, remember we're doing this as a privacy screen for future privacy. Not that we have an issue right now, but we just want to ensure in 20 years, if the property behind us gets sold and there's a bunch of houses back there, that we do have some, um, a bit of privacy because we are pretty exposed back here. Again, this is straight out of our back porch off the new patio. So we want to have these gorgeous trees to look at. Do you not love this Berkey? cedar i mean it is absolutely gorgeous so it is a native tree it is hardy in zones three through nine the spread on it will be about 15 feet and i know right now looking at the berkey versus the green giant you're thinking jenny why in the world why don't you like flip them why is the berkey not in the back and the green giants in the front that is simply to, the Berkeys are just a more mature tree right now than the Green Giants. The Green Giants long term will be those huge, massive, gorgeous, evergreen trees that we know and love. We have three of them. Remember, um, kind of hiding our tractor shed. They are massive. They grow in that perfect conical pyramidal shape, that classic Christmas tree shape. The green giants can be like 40 to 50 feet tall, 15 to 20 feet wide, where the Berkeys are only going to be at their maximum height about 25 feet tall. The green giants will also grow really like two feet a year. So for a tree, they're a really fast grower. So I'm not concerned. It does not bother me that the bigger trees are in front right now and the smaller trees are in back they're going to grow they're going to develop it's not that big of a deal but we were able to get these gorgeous berkeys and i wanted to go ahead and get this beauty and put her in the ground as opposed to being something you know of a smaller size so when these this whole screen is mature in a couple of years well gosh, I don't know, I won't say a couple of years, but as they grow and they develop, this will basically be a solid hedge of green in the fact that the Berkeys will not be touching each other, but they will come out. Then you have the green giants that are nice and big with their wide base. So we will have a gorgeous screen right here. Remember the Berkeys will have in the summertime a beautiful blue green foliage and then in the winter they'll turn like a coppery color. So it'll be really nice contrast against it's the dark green um, green giants the green giants really keep their color all year round of that same kind of that greenness then in the future if we ever wanted to come back in here and in front of the Berkeys, if we want to put some camellias in here some azaleas and kind of bring this out forward and create more of a of a bed with lots of like flower power we could absolutely do that um, this is just we're getting the bones in as i like to say for this privacy screen very simple in the fact of the design, but yet very effective. Now, what is the care that we have to do for these trees? You notice that we have a nice thick layer of mulch around each of the base of these trees. We do this for a couple of reasons. One, it looks pretty. Two, it will help suppress any weeds that try to come up because we are in the back of this field. There's going to be grass all around it. And we don't want weeds or grass growing straight up against the tree. It'll make it easier for Jerry and the kids to come around and mow around here. Keeps that easy. Two, three, mulch. It insulates your roots. So it acts like a blanket on the roots of the tree. So in the summertime, it helps keep the roots a little bit cooler. And then in the wintertime, it helps um, keep the the cold out of it. So it's more of an even temperature for the roots. And then of course, in the summertime, it will, when we're not getting as much consistent rain, that mulch helps hold in the moisture. So the moisture does not evaporate really quickly. This is not gonna be on any kind of irrigation. Honestly, because we're planting this in November, we 
more than likely will never have to water these trees. We may, if it comes, you know, this summer and it is just, we go through a big heat spell with no rain for a long time. We'll come over here and throw, you know, some five gallon buckets of water on here. But really for the first year, that's when you kind of have to be the most baby the trees. But because we're planting in November, it's cooler. We get more consistent rain. We're not going to have to worry about water in these now. The ground was nice and moist. It's going to rain. I think we've got another hurricane coming through, another tropical storm going to come through. Who knows what's going to happen. It is 2020 after all. So we're going to get consistent rain, not going to have to worry about it. Pruning, we're not going to have to prune these guys. They are, that's the beauty of these trees. They naturally have this gorgeous shape. We have planted them out away from a house or any kind of structure. They have plenty of room to grow and become in their natural beauty, their natural state. So we're not going to have to prune them. These trees are also very disease resistant, bug resistant. They are really pretty much pest free. So other than planting and spending the time planting them and getting them in the ground, after that, it's pretty much hands off. As the trees grow, they will obviously their their width will expand and we'll start losing grass here, which is great. We could have made this a massive mulch bed, but at this point it just doesn't make any sense. One that's really expensive to add all that mulch, then the time, the energy and all that. So we're just going to keep these circles of mulch here and as the trees grow, we'll kind of expand the mulch just out a little bit and then eventually we won't really have to do anything because the trees are going to cover this whole area. So on that aspect, it's really uh, again a great maintenance free. I hope this video has um, given you some ideas if you are looking to incorporate or add a privacy screen into your yard. You don't have to do it on this scale. Maybe you only need three trees. But again, it introduces you to a new tree, maybe two new trees that you are not aware of that make just great privacy screens very easy to care for um, and are highly effective and nice fast growers. As always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. We love you. We appreciate you. Y'all have a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next video. The root ball is and um, the root ball is and um,